Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday the 13th of November. And first on our agenda we have the lovely assessors here for a, the annual tax classification process. All right, so what do you got for us? Okay, well I prepared a PowerPoint to, to have a good visual for everyone here and at home. So to start with, I just am going to pick a different house every year. That's like a yeah. classic house. So okay. here's one from North Maine. So this is the fiscal year 2018 classification hearing. So what is the purpose of the hearing? The purpose is uh, Mass General Law 40 and 56 allows the shift in the tax burden between property classes. This does not change the total tax levy for the community. It simply determines the share to be borne by each class. So now we talk about shifting the burden. The only way to shift it is uh, you can shift it commercial, industrial, and personal property as one amount, and the residential and open space as another. So they just shorten that by CIP, commercial, industrial, and personal. It may be increased up to 50% as long as the residential and open space classes raise at least 65% of what they would be raised without the shift. So what's the overview? Well, every three years, uh, assessments must be made at 100% fair market value, certified and audited by Mass Department of Revenue. Uh, although recently, they've changed that to five. So that previously it was three, now they've upped it to five, and our next reval is tentatively set for 2022. So every year, you have to make interim adjustments to be 100% of fair market value, and those have to be certified by Department of Revenue. So here we have just an illustration of the different classes. We have the residential, commercial, industrial, and personal property. So then here we go, and this is an illustration of what would happen if we split the rate. So what I have is the average fiscal 2017 value for residential, commercial, and industrial. And then the first category is if it's just one tax rate for everybody. It shows you what the rates are and then what the shift is. And as you go down, you see the residential gets lower, but the CIP goes higher. And it just, it's an unfair burden on the commercial, honestly, in a town this size. The wow. only towns that really have this are typically towns that have some kind of power generation, like Montague, Irving. Row. So they have a large base. They have a large tax base and they can bear the burden. Understood. But if you want, it's really not fair to commercial. If you want to encourage any kind of commercial, it's just really, it's as you can see, as you go down to 75%, it almost doubles the commercial tax. So I have to ask Teresa if I could as well, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not giving away the goat right there with the residential and CIP both at 15. It's just. That's that, just that's just a random number. That's just a random Got number. It. I just picked the average value of each of those classes. I Understood. took all the properties and Understood. averaged Understood. it just to give you some kind of visual. Yep. So. Thank you. Yep. And then this, I made a little chart it's just showing the trends for the last five years. Pretty much, it's all stable. The uh, residential class creeping slowly, which is the big blue line, which you can see it's hardly any different. Uh, the one thing that's increased some is the personal property over last year because we did some site visits this year. And so that went up. Um, you'll see in the next couple slides uh, how much it went up because uh, there were certain places that were underreporting. So now we have the proposed tax rate and summary. We have our numbers from last year, the residential, the commercial, industrial, and personal property, and our totals. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see in this, because it's a little small, but uh, personal property went up 9% because when our vendor went out, Patriot, and they did some site visits, they captured some revenue of, for people that were grossly underreporting. So that's where that came from. It isn't from new businesses, it's just- Existing. Existing that needed to be audited. Um, and so then it shows you the the amount to be raised, other sources, and the tax levy. So the tax levy's gone up. Last year's tax rate was 1434. The proposed rate, which is pending approval by Department of Revenue, will be $15. So that has an increase over last year, but the tax levy um, is different. So 
it gives you all the figures on here. So this is where the board can give their recommendation. So maybe Jim would like to. I'd okay. um, like to recommend a single tax rate for Town of Sunderland. Um, we're looking at $15 for everyone this year. It's gone up. Last year was $14.34. Okay, and so then I prepared this chart, which is just historic tax rates. So if you look at the last 20 years, back in 98, the town's rate was 1708. And then it kind of went down in the middle, and now it's going back up. So the average rate over the last 20 years is 1410, if you took all those years and average together. So it fluctuates depending on different factors. And the water district has pretty much stayed the same. Theirs is going down a penny this year. But if you look at their record, it's been anywhere from 50 to, to like 65 cents and everywhere in between. So that concludes the um, presentation I created on that. Got some questions? Maybe. Could you go back to the slide second to last? That one. Okay. So I see classifications. I see in red is the fiscal eighteen year under, year under discussion. Correct. Mm -hmm. I see a little bit of growth in all the categories: residential, commercial, industrial, as well as under personal property. Mm -hmm. Right, and the, the the total valuations are. 200, you know, 349, 834 at, at the far right. So how do we get to $15 an hour when you see the values? Are the values driving up or is it quantity the, that's driving up? It's the levy capacity. So a total capacity based on the total evaluation of the town. Right. And I did bring that up to the accountant, mm -hmm. the town mm -hmm. accountant, because I said, why is the tax levy gone up? And this is uh, what he said. He said in uh, FY17, the excess levy capacity was you know, around 115000 The amount was raised but wasn't expended or appropriated. Mm -hmm. So now, this year, they've taken that amount and it's been brought down to 3407 That's the levy capacity, which is more in line with the long-term average. So the reason the rate went down last year, last year was because the money was appropriated but not, or it was... That amount was made, but it was it was raised, but it wasn't spend, spent. The capital, basically, the capital override. Yeah. So I mean, are we talking about putting it in and taking it out on the right. other side? So okay. that adjustment was made. I'm and trying to pitch. I'm trying yeah. to pitch the argument to the people who are watching, or maybe <laughs> yeah. watching in the future. Well, that you know, so. this this right here is a function of, frankly, not necessarily expending all of the potential expenses that we had options to do. Right. So yeah, if you want more detail, <clears throat> you'd have to talk to the accountant. Yep. But I did ask. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because I said, to my, I know they're going to ask. Well, I think from a, from a purely retail right. perspective, you know, Jim's going to ask, why did it go from blank right. to blank? Right. Right. The reality is, you didn't spend a hundred and change over the course of the prior year. You didn't need to. We didn't mm -hmm. expend it. So. Right. That's on the valuation. Right. Got it. Okay. Any Thank other you. questions? I appreciate the detail, if I could, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the, the presentation and showing the, the historical average over, you know, it's nearly 20 years. So thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah, that, I think that was a good, a nice little perspective on it. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's not the highest it's been, it's not the lowest, but it's not that out of line either. Right. And it's still fairly low compared to most of the towns around us, too. It is. Look, and yeah, I think that's one of the things you got to keep into perspective, too. Previous to last year, it was 1466, so we actually went down, and now we're kind of going back and then adjusting up. So it isn't really as drastic as it sounds. Yeah, like when you average it out, yeah, right. it's right. a lot more of a, a steadier line. Can you one more question, Mr. Chair? Mm -hmm. Is, uh, if I could, Teresa and, and the Board of Assessors, I know there's a motion on the assessors uh, waiting for a second. That said, I'm curious with one question about uh, growth. Has there been, a, is there a growth factor that's in this equation or is this assets that are currently in the ground? 
No, there's well, there's always growth every year, mm -hmm. and that gets factored into all these figures too. Got it. And the the growth is steadily, you know, every year it's steadily growing a little because right. there's new homes and things like that. It's not a huge amount of growth, but there right. is a steady Small, increase steady, right. in growth every year. We are seeing, uh, you know, additions to homes, yep. and, um, and that's part of the growth. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you know, people are updating their homes, uh, making, you know, adding more square feet. Okay. In that, so that kind of makes up the, the growth. And is There's there one other question, if I could, Mr. Chair? Is there any? Is there any? Is there? Has there been any parcels or open spaces that have changed significantly over the course of this past year that are going to affect us next year? Either moving into APR or going to nonprofits or coming off a particular schedule? It's always a little wonky looking at it in one meeting, but there is a Ouija board of assets that move around the town and how they're classified. I think it's staying stable. There's mm -hmm. not much movement okay. into um, you know the ch to chapter mm -hmm. chapter land programs. Okay. Um, yeah, there's uh, it's pretty much time. stable. I mean, yeah. there's yeah, there's a small parcel that was two acres was taken out for, but nothing major. Okay. Right. I said and this board's had discussion in the past about, you know, how you go about those the tension between the opportunity for uh, some development and open space. And that tension is something that comes up almost request by request by request, as opposed to kind of holistically. Yep. Okay. And it's a constant tension. And it's a constant tension. Because, right. you know, it, you, know, you talk to a lot of people, we want to preserve the character of the town, yep. save open space, but then there's you know, the need for development. Right. And, and but I don't, don't suspect there's been much of a change in the percentage of commercial versus residential property either, because that yeah. seems very steady overall, and, which is one of the reasons why you know, we typically recommend that, right. the, the way the way it's structured. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not enough to, to really justify. The other way. Thank you. Anything, Tom? What's that? Okay. We need a motion to approve one classification. What's that? A motion for one tax classification. Okay. Second. I'll you made the, the motion. motion. I'll make the motion. <laughs> 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 Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero, Jerry. Opposed? No? Okay. All right. Thanks so much for the quality information. I appreciate okay. it. I do have Let's another work. presentation. Let's do it. And so this is our second topic. We're yes. discussing an IT grant yes. project. So I prepared a uh, another one of... We can't get, get enough PowerPoints. So. Yeah, we yeah. <laughs> All right, now let's see if we can get it to come up here. <laughs> Not cat videos, not cat videos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. It's cats using technology. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so here we go. It's a little shows up a little darker there than uh, on my computer, but hopefully you'll get the you'll get the drift here. So basically, what are we talking about? GIS online mapping. I prepared a short a usage guide for people that aren't familiar, and then it's going to show what the upgrade possibilities are if we get this grant. Um, so first thing I'm showing is if you go to the town website and you go to the assessors page, this is what you're going to see. There's a link to the GIS, and then there's also I created a little tutorial on how to get a property card. And this property card, um, when you print it, is going to be a scaled down version of what my software assess pro will give you but it's a little more you more user friendly for the average person um, so what I've done is I gone in to the uh, I did a bunch of screenshots to try to illustrate this so this is in the GIS I put in 12 school street which we're located right now you'll see on the left it shows a little picture of the town hall and the address got the map and lot and then what happens is you get this uh, image to the right which the parcels highlighted and it has this little box and I circled to show that you have two options the property card and the building sketch and so if you click on the property card this is what you're gonna get it's a condensed version 
of the Assess Pro, but it's very user friendly. It has the location, the acres, the parcel number, the land use code, who the owner is, mailing address, zoning, and then it gives you the values, land, yard, building, everything. It's got a sketch of the building, it has a picture of the building, and then it, it gives you information about the interior. So anybody, any resident can do this because it's, it's live now. And any, anybody who gets on the web can do this. You can do this from anywhere in the world at any time of the day. So then I wanted to show on here how, I circled this, if there's tabs here, it says search of butters and layers. So if you click on the layers, it shows we have a few different layers and one of them is a zoning map. And so what it does, if you look at the town here, it shows the overlay of all the zoning over the town of Sunderland. So, and then on my page, I have a picture of the map which has the key showing what the different zones are. So there's different zones and then you have overlay districts. So people can go on there and see that. So now what I wanted to show you is the first thing is a staff site upgrade, which we already have implemented. And what this does is it gives um, departments in the town a secure login. This is not a public function, but it is something that each department can do and log on, and it will give you tools to get information that you can then present to the public. Um, so we've got that going. And this is really important. I wanted to show you this. This is one of the tools that we got with the staff site. This is a traffic report, and I did this last week. and shows for the last 90 days. We've had 933 page views. So that's pretty impressive, I think, for our little town. And then it shows you like 782 were found by going to our website. There was 123 that went directly to GIS and then, you know, somewhere in Google. But it's being used. So there's a value in having this online. And I don't get that many uh, people, appraisers, coming in asking for cards anymore. They're just getting them all online, which is fantastic. And then if they need clarification on something they contact me but sense. it's much more user-friendly because I'm only here two days a week and so people were having to wait to get information now they can get it any time and then this just shows the type of devices that are so it isn't just desktop so there was 819 views desktop 58 mobile 56 from the tablet so you can view this on any any media you want so now this is just going to show you a couple things that we can currently do with the upgrade we've done before, you could only search a property by its exact address or parcel number or owner. Now you can do it from streets. You can get street intersections. Um, and then this I wanted to show, this is what the public can do or I could do before the upgrade. I could ask for an abutters list, so I did a 300 foot abutters list for the town of Sunderland. And so as you see, it highlights in pink the parcels that are the abutters and then it circles it hmm. and then I can get a map I can print a map that shows this I can also get a PDF and mailing labels for this abutters list so that's quite handy yeah it's fantastic but now that we have this upgrade I can even tweak it more so this is just these are these are going to be slides that I got from cartographic that aren't necessarily Sunderland but it's just to illustrate what you can do so this if I just want to get these people in a row, I can do that. I can just pull these people for whatever reason, like maybe like this is showing they're in a wetland. So I just wanna I just wanna get a list of people that are just on that side of the street. It gives you the ability to add and subtract parcels to this abutters list any way you want. Before you were only limited to like a radius. So that that could be useful in a lot of different ways. And we currently can do that. Now this is what I want this is where we're talking about the grant. This is called an editor service, and so it's going to expand on everything that we currently have, but it will give us more tools uh, so that we can track data and it can be used interdepartmental and everything. And with this, each department would have their own login. And so what I'm going to show you are some possibilities, and what it does is you can create map layers that are like the zoning layer or the abutters layer, but in an infinite amount of ways, whatever you can think of. And so these are some of the ones that I thought would be most beneficial to our town based on our demographics. So like this one is land restrictions. So this has different color-coded areas um, that you can say which ones are 61A, which ones are APR, which ones are exempt. You know, so just like in one quick shot, you can pull this map 
and then you can filter it. So if I just want to see the APR land, I could put that in here and it would just bring up the APR land on a map because sometimes it's useful, not just a list, but you want to see where these are in the town. How so many that's additional layers are they going to give us? As many as we want because, okay. well, there's a fee, of course, but the grant is, I believe, up to $200,000. Mm -hmm. So the idea is, when I spoke to Cartographic, to just come up with our ultimate wish list of what we'd like they'll give us a price quote and then we can apply for it with the grant because it's cheaper to do it if we do it all in one shot and then the grant would pay for it. So even if we were not able to utilize all the layers immediately, it doesn't matter. The code would be written and it would be in place for whenever we could implement it. But some of these, at least from the assessor's point of view, are will be dynamic. In other words, if I enter a code into my software, it will automatically populate into a layer. So that's that because it knows what you'd like to look it's at. It's well, it already has. Already. There, there's a there's an export that I can pull mm -hmm. a file from Assess Pro, and it will go right into Cartographic, and it will look for these key entries that I've made, and it'll populate it into a map. So this is just one. I'm gonna gonna go through these quick. Here's another one. You could do town owned property, or you could do state owned, or whatever. And then this is you could have flood zones, which might be pertinent here. You know, because people do ask a lot, am I in the flood zone? People that aren't from around here, they don't, they don't realize that it doesn't flood all the time like the Meadows does in Greenfield. It's, it's a 100-year flood zone. But still, it would be nice to have that on a map. Um, here you could have, you know, for a historical town, you could have house age map. You, could, you can create, like, whatever you can think of, they can create. So i got to come up with things that we would like to do. Here's one that maybe the highway department could do, assign inventory. Yeah, there's there's a lot there's, of useful layers. Yeah. So then this are these are some layers that we were thinking of possibly. Like the Board of Health could have a layer that's just septic and wells. And since they don't have the software like I have, there's there's an ability in this editor tool to enter um, from a drop down, which they'd have to decide what they want to have in the drop down, but there could be a drop down that's just septic. And in the drop down you could have the type of septic. You could have who the inspectors were, when it was done, and the importance of having a drop down instead of someone just entering data is that it will be uniform no matter who enters it because when you do a query, if you don't have uniformity in your drop down, it's going to be skewed data. So even though they don't have anything in place right now, they could write this program where they could go parcel by parcel and add who has a septic, who has a well. <coughs> I mean, it would be a process, but it wouldn't have to be like you'd have to have all this data right now. Uh, another thing, this, these are just things that Cartographic suggested. So public works, you could have a location of signs, street lights, you know, landmark trees, snowplow routes, whatever. Fire department could have hydrants, um, hazardous material. Police could have their own. And the beauty of this is each department has a unique sign-on. So I would not be able to access police data. Police couldn't access mine. You know, each department could have their own level of security. And some of this stuff is public record. Some of it is not. But, like, you could do recreation. You could have the trails where the ball feeds were, where the parks were. So some of this, it's a private uh, layer. But if someone <coughs> asks for the information, you can create it and then give it to them. Um, and then there, lastly, you could have a thing about rental properties. So the thing is, we know about the big apartments, but there's a lot of single-family homes in town that people are renting out, either rooms or whatever, and it would be nice, ultimately, to know where those were, so then perhaps you could send some kind of mailing if, if it was needed. So here's the benefits of upgrading. Um, you could satisfy the public record request because now it's 10 days to satisfy this request. So if there was a quick way to get the data, it would make it easier for everybody. There'd be a centralized record keeping between the departments. Um, you, you have real-time data. So it isn't like, oh, I create this layer and it's 10 years old. You can constantly go okay. in there and edit it, upgrade it. And then uh, you can offer more information to the residents and you have inter-department, inter you know, can talk. So then the last thing I want to talk about is um, because we can make all these layers, one layer that we could create is a building permit layer, and it would show the building inspector who has outstanding permits and whatever. But the thing is, he doesn't have any software right now. So I talked to two different companies that have permitting software. 
One of them is owned by the same as, um, it's Patriot. It's the same as my Assess Pro. And so that's what I'm going to show you because the other one didn't really seem to fit our town. But the, the logic here is if the building inspector had the software, then Cartographic could create a layer for him. So we're being hopeful that perhaps if we bundle the permitting software saying that it's required to do a layer, that maybe the grant would pay for it. We don't know if they will, but it's like, why not try? So then I got, so I got a few slides from Patriot to show you what it would be. So this is, there's just saying, this is, they, this is theirs. But anyway, it's showing that Assess Pro, which is my current software, works together with Permit Pro. Now, is it a one-time cost <coughs> for that, or is it's there a one-time cost to set it up, and then there's an annual fee? Yeah. Um, but their thought when that was, you might be able to roll it into the fees Perfect. of the permits, so it would be self-funding, okay. potentially. So this is just showing you like what a what a resident would see. It asks you for different information. It tells mm. you the fields in red, and you know if. It just takes all your information. So people could get their permits done online at home any time of the day instead of just Mondays and Tuesdays. And then this is showing, you know, you can have different departments. You can have the, for commercial, electrical, gas, plumbing, residential, whatever. There's different, uh, each one could have its own category depending on what the resident wanted. And then each of those departments can look at the permits that were um, issued. And then lastly, it automatically will upload the information into Assess Pro, so I wouldn't have to manually enter. Because right now, someone comes in, Joe gives them a permit. Joe has to copy the permit, then he gives me the paper copy. Then I take the paper copy, I entered in my Assess Pro, and then I entered in an Excel file. With this, overnight it would automatically uh, upload all the permits into my Assess Pro, and then I can just print an Excel sheet with the same thing that I'm manually entering. It will also uh, let me go on and see who has a certificate of occupancy so that they're going to be able to be assessed properly, which mm -hmm. I get all this now manually, but it's all this arduous paper trail. So if we could get this bundled in with the grant, this would be a win-win for everybody because the residents would be able to do their permits online. And then say if somebody has a new single family home, they would apply for the permit and then it it has this hierarchy of who has to approve things as you go along. So Joe would have to approve one thing, plumbing would have to do one, electrical one, and resident could go on there and see what is the status of their permit. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be approved? And then what is the status of how the project is going? And then it would, there's a lot that can be done online and the record keeping would be just fantastic. And then people could pay online because it's the same pay system that we already have set up with the town clerk and the tax collector. A question: How portable is the data so that if, for some reason, we needed to change vendors on the permitting piece, are we able to get the historical information and easily shift that over to a new vendor, or is they do they have that locked in? That I don't know for sure, but um, it'd be just something to check on. Potentially, yeah. Because you know, you never know. There, there might be a reason that we have to change the vendors, right. and we don't want to be. Yeah, I'd have to hamstrung like that. That's right, I'd have to no ask. Problem with that. Now, tip, that's the end of the presentation. So, typically, the grant is only for one type of project. So, our ultimate goal is to upgrade the GIS because that would be the most beneficial for everyone. But what our hope is is that perhaps we could bundle this permitting software in there because it's contingent on whether we get this, whether the building inspector could get a layer. So, yeah, so we don't know if they will go to build for that. A case. Yeah, we're, we're trying to, and sense. I spoke to the woman at Patriot, and I told her what our intentions were, and she said she could help us with the grant writing and how to get them to perhaps approve it. So it's kind of a long shot, but we're thinking, well, we might as well just go for it. And if they deny the permitting software, oh well, well we tried, and maybe we'll get the GIS upgrades. Well, it may. I mean, we've looked at permitting stuff in the past, right? So maybe it's worth looking at. Even outside of it, too, you know. If we have, yes. If it's going to be, a, depending on what it saves us in terms of efficiencies and money, and 
It would definitely make us more efficient. Right, and, and make the deal. process easier for everybody involved. Yeah, yeah, and a lot easier to track because the, right. the paper, you know, paper is just cumbersome at this point. There's less room for error too because well, the data's right. only being entered once. Right, and another great thing, because this is just a tidbit of it, but you know, we sat through this whole thing, it was like an hour long, but when people apply, if you don't enter the required fields, they'll get a little message. You didn't fill in this field, you didn't fill in this field, you know, and so there's a lot of checks and balances and like yeah. Sherry said, less room for error. And then the ability to just collect the money right away, that's people can do that online. Yeah. I mean it's Actors really just can access the data from yes. the field so they can from check the field, on the field. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. Exactly. So from on their device. phone or tablet or whatever, they can be out doing an inspection, they can pull up the permit, they can approve it right in the field, they can see the notes if so they don't have you don't have to have so much paper. And it's it good from an enforcement be. perspective too, because if you're, you know, you drive by a building, you see something going on, like, oh, do they have a permit? Exactly. You can go on a check and find out. Right, and you can, depending on how you query on that software, like if it's just an electrical issue, you, the electrical in, uh, inspector can just say, I just want to see electrical. You don't have to filter through all the permits. You know, plumbing can just do plumbing. Building can just do building. And then when I go on there, I can just pull up. I just want to know the COs, or I want to see, I can just, it all goes into an Excel sheet, because right now it's like you're duplicating, duplicating so much work, and I could be spending my time on something that might be more beneficial than just entering the same data over and over. That was one of my questions too, so when you put in queries, you get it out in Excel format? Is it, uh, in this no? software, yeah. she said yes, you could okay. get an Excel spreadsheet, which right now, like I said, I get the paper permit, I entered in a CESPRO, then I entered in my own Excel sheet, you know, it's just, very time consuming. Right. You just do an just, export. You enter it once and then you can get it out yeah, in different formats. Right. And I don't even have to enter it. It's just put in there and then I just do a query. I would like to see a spreadsheet and I put over what time period I want. I could say a week, I could say a month, I could say for the year and it would all come out. And then I can put that on my computer and then I can manipulate the data to get the information I need. That's where you get some like new growth figures. There's a lot of beneficial things. If you do a GIS query on that, and somebody, let's say somebody comes to you and asks you for information, like what format do they get it back in? Does it go into a PDF or? It can be. Okay. Yep. And so the thing with this uh, editor tool, if you could get all these layers, that would be fantastic because people ask a lot of questions. Like they want to know what are all the agricultural. Okay, well, I can pull up a different spreadsheet, but it doesn't have a visual. So if you want to see, I mean, it's not that hard to figure out. Right along the river is the prim primary site for the agricultural and then you know kind of it spreads out a little but all you have to do is look down the map and all along the river is your primary but if you want to have a map this would do it and like I said I, there's different fields in a CESPRO which I've been working with Patriot to find out what fields are pulled in the extract that I currently have and so there's a lot of different fields another thing I'm trying oh actually I did but I don't have a visual here is on the online property cards for cartographic, uh, there's some sites in town, some parcels in town where there's they're kind of like in two zoning areas. And that's not up to my discretion of which zoning area it's going to apply to. But like if Joe wants to go on there and see, now I had them write a program where it'll, sh it'll show the multiple zones. Before it would only pull one. Now it'll pull any zone that it's in. And the other thing that it's pulling is um, property use codes. Before, if somebody had a house and they had 61A and they had like a commercial building, it would just come up with this mixed use code, which was like 017, which doesn't really mean much to general people. But this, it'll say, okay, we have a house, we have 61A, we have a commercial building. It'll all show up on the card. And then the last thing that I had added was uh, something on the category legal description. And what I can do there is if there's a conservation restriction, I can just type in conservation restriction. So all that's going to do is just alert someone looking at that parcel that they need to contact the commission. It's not contact me to find out what it is, it's just there is one. And that eliminates like people calling all these different departments, is there is, you know, I can put that on the property card and then that'll be online. And the other thing, same thing like if it's APR, I can label that card APR and you know, so there's going to be a lot. Right now, there's more information available to the general public than there was last year because we added these things. And if we get this editor service, there'll be even more that we can give people. 
Well, I think we can probably reap some savings in terms of infrastructure efficiencies and things like that, mm -hmm. you know, going out looking at like signage or something mm -hmm. like that. If you've got to replace, you know, all the stop signs or something like that, you know, there's a lot of ways that we can track things out there mm -hmm. and make it easier for people to find. Because like, I know you can put like sore connections on there, all sorts of stuff. So, yeah. If I could, Mr. Chair, one question. Where's the grant from? It's a IT grant from the, it's part of the uh, Community Compact Got Grant it. Program. Thanks, Sherry. Same program that we got the phone, new phone system and the data cabling. Yeah. 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 Any other questions? Or? Yeah. Uh, with respect to it, I think it makes yeah. a great deal of sense. Yeah. It does. So I believe that is got to be done in January. January, yeah. So we're trying to, I'm trying to get all the departments to let me know if they're interested because I have to let Cartographic know in December so they can come up with a price, so then a quote, you know, so then we can put that in the grant because you have to, you know, put that in there. So, so we have to have a scope, we have to have uh, procurement rules, it can't, it can't be built exclusive to Cartographics, right? Got it. Okay. Unless they're state contracted or whatever, but right, right. working numbers, a budget. Yep. Great. Thank you. So, thank you, Teresa. Nice okay. job. Yeah. Okay. So, um, does the town administrator have a tablet or laptop? I have a laptop. Laptop, that sounds, yeah. So, we should have our agenda now. Now we're able to connect up, like we just saw, probably displayed so that uh, we can switch back and forth through it, right? And sure. some of the information that we're looking at could be displayed sure. just as well. Sure. Right. So people could follow uh, along with the meetings. Point. It's another thing we got to tackle is our display stuff. Well, yeah. it, I mean, Teresa did a nice job. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think yeah. it's easier for people to follow at home instead of just looking at whatever. I mean, they could follow some of the information that's ongoing on the screen. So. Right. So then I'm just listening to what we're talking about. Correct. Well, you can listen and look at the same time. So do you need a motion to pursue the grant, or is it just informational for just us? Just informational at this Great. time. Great. Thanks. And it will help in our inspectional services. Right. Not yeah. just a building inspector, but like the fire department with the, mm -hmm. the hazardous all the waste and all that stuff. So it's yeah. very nice. Good job, Teresa. A lot of good useful information. Thanks, assessors. You got a good one there. Thanks. Have a good night. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Move up where you can see me. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't ah. see you behind all the assessors there. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, I want to just tell you the. Uh, Veterans Day ceremony went very well. We had a lot of positive feedback, um, and the guest speaker was really tremendous this year as a lieutenant colonel um, operations officer from out at the Force Support Squadron in Westover. She did a really good job. In fact, I was going to ask you if you have the town coins, it'd be nice to present one to her uh, as a thank you from the town because. Uh, it's not. It's not always easy for them to come out, and they write their they write their own uh, uh, speeches, and uh, it, it's an incentive to ask them to come back again next year. All right. I went to the Upper Valley uh, Pioneer Valley Veterans uh, Services yeah. District meeting. That was my first meeting, and so I was getting to know the people out there. One of the things that they said was uh, they they asked that. The representatives go back and ask their selectmen or their uh, town leaders to um, pay the assessment this year as quickly as possible. This is the assessment. I guess you probably already have it, but I'll just give that to you anyway. Um, they they did bring up something that that I found interesting. Um, there's something like 50 towns in, in Massachusetts that use a senior uh, tax work off program where you can reduce taxes for a senior resident. 
there's been a newly approved program in Massachusetts that is specifically for veterans, and it falls under Massachusetts General Law 59. And under that law, in this Section 5N, if you, if you qualify as a veteran, um, then you would, you would, under the Massachusetts definition of a veteran, you would then qualify for this program if the town has it. About half of the 50, about 25 towns in Massachusetts have adopted a veteran's work-off program. And just generally, real quick, if, if it is adopted, um, the town gets the services of the veteran who would identify to the town what their, what their, uh, what their capabilities are. Like I, I'm an engineer, so I know how to do things like surveying, I can write specifications, I can, you know, all the typical things that an engineer does. So if I were applying for the program, then I would say this is what I can do for the town if you, if you choose to employ me. And the veteran is then employed for the Massachusetts minimum wage, which I think right now is $11 an hour. So they have to work the, the number of hours required to work off. Under the original program, it was $1,000. Just recently, the, the uh, legislature increased that to $1,500 a year. That's reimbursed to the town by the state. Um, and each town has a different, uh, the, the towns are allowed to, to write some of their own rules into this program. Um, some of them have added the requirement that you be underneath a certain income level. Some have uh, uh, chosen to limit it to um, uh, some amount less than the state maximum. This is the, this is the form that is used for that program. And I'll just tell you that um, Greenfield has 10 positions that are available. Each town can have up to 20 positions a year. Greenfield has 10 that were authorized, four of them are filled. Holyoke has 20, but I don't know how many of them have been filled. So it's just another way for a town to um, to increase their capability at very low, well, actually no cost. It, there's an initial cost, but then you're reimbursed just the way you are for a tax write-off. Um, and for a veteran, the, the good thing about this program is it ha there is no impact on any other program. Like if you get a, if you get a, uh, $400 tax relief because you're a disabled veteran and you're a Vietnam veteran. You can also, in addition to that, um, reduce your tax even further by using that program. So it's just something to consider. Um, Greenfield, Greenfield has it. This is, uh, this is what Greenfield requires. So just so you have something to look at. This is what the state um, law says. Um, it says any city or town which accepts this section, this is section 5N of chapter 59, the Board of Selectmen of a town may establish a program to allow veterans as defined in clause 43rd of section 7 of chapter 4 or a spouse of a veteran in the case where the veteran is deceased or has a service-connected disability to volunteer to provide services to that city or town in exchange for such volunteer services, the city or town shall reduce the real property tax obligations of that veteran or veteran's tax bills, and that reduction shall be in addition to any exception or abatement to which the person is otherwise entitled. And I'll just leave that with you as well. That's that's the the, the law or the general law. And then here's this, these are just two things that we could post downstairs. There is some free first responder training that will be provided by uh, Greenfield College, junior or community college. It is specifically to uh, recognize PTSD and veterans that are coming back from uh, war zones and um, how to recognize suicide um, thoughts and how to prevent or help prevent them. And then this is this is uh, exposure to military hazards and how 
um, you know, there's information on how veterans may want to apply for, you know, if they've been exposed to asbestos or Agent Orange, um, different things. So that could go on the, on the town bulletin board. Okay. Other than that, I say it's the first meeting. So um, for me, it was um, getting, to know the, getting to know the people and figuring out what their procedures are. But, uh, and then I wasn't sure what forum that I'm supposed to come back and I guess it's, it's, it's the town um, selectman meeting like this. Um, so I guess I'll come back after the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, could we, uh, that, that information that uh, Dan put forward about, can, you, can we put it on our webpage under our veterans? Mm -hmm. And so that anybody looking for that information online, they can that they can access that information. Sure, we'll just scan it right in and pop it up there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's it for me. Um, have we got the coins? Have Have you got your coins yet? The selected coins. Yes. You get them. Uh, can I get you to authorize one that I can take out to the guest speaker that was at the motion? Let you consider it at any rate. Sure. Second. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I, I do want to thank FCAT. FCAT was there like they have been uh, every year. And this year they did something different. They got they had two cameras out there. And so that's I'm waiting to see how that's going to come out. Nice. That's. Um, what I always do after the event is I always write a thank you letter to the highest command person that I can find in the military structure for the people who came out. Last year that was a major general in Chicago or somewhere in the Midwest. And that helps them come back the next year because that person will write a letter saying, you know, for your community involvement, uh, uh, it's a letter of commendation. Um, in addition to to writing a letter like that, all the photographs that are taken in the in, during the event and all the videos that are taken, including the FCAT video, I put on a CD and I take out and I give it, I give one copy to each participant. Oh, nice! So um, that you know that's another way to to uh, increase participation. The event has grown every year since the first year. This year we didn't have anybody from the Navy out there because MEPS, which is our the military entrance processing station, which is our asset for Navy personnel, had some kind of a uh, mission requirement and they weren't able to come out this year. But we still had 20 people out there in uniform and every one of them went over to the school afterwards even though the Westover Honor Guard was only able to stay at the school for a few minutes because they had to leave and go to a military funeral. So it's a, it's a good event. That's, that was the ninth year. And next year, I'm going to try to do two, although I don't know if that will be successful or not. The, the one event is, as it always has been, for the children. And then <coughs> the 300th committee wants me to try and get um, uh, the, the soldiers back out here for November the 11th itself. That'll be more difficult because sure. November the 11th is a holiday for them too. Right. So I will try, but uh, I don't know how. I don't know how successful I'll be. <laughs> That's all I have. Well, appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. Thanks so much for all you do, Dan. Thanks. We also have the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans Service Agreement. This will be our second vote of this after it's been formed. We voted, to, we voted to enter it. Mm -hmm. This is a renewal? Yes. A renewal for three years. Three years. Three years. Oh. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Again, that gets us from a single series of agents to a, a cohesive office. Right. And they do very good work. Very good. All right. Next, we've got the personnel committee. All two of us here <laughs> <laughs> to talk about. Um, so
sort of a continuation from last year. Won't you? Come on down. <laughs> sure. I'm going to let you do the talking, John. Ah, uh, <laughs> <okay>. support. <laughs> you have the uh, microphone. Um, what we wanted to look at was uh, our comp reviews and everything this year. And what we want to do is take it the, up in and correct me if I miss anything. Or, sure, no, uh, no. And um, I'm sure you can help too. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we wanted to start off back with the fundamentals and because it's kind of like a it's kind of like an argument over the federal budget sometimes it's like unless you're arguing over the same set of numbers you're just going to kind of talk past each other so what we want to do is make sure that we got we modified the comp towns we looked at those and we want to make sure that it, all of us are in agreement on our comp town list mm -hmm. before we take the next step um, and, like, and, and among the next steps is we want to which it's going to be a little arduous but we want to get <coughs> job descriptions for the positions that we're looking at for here um, and so that we can look at those because we essentially we want to kind of look at the total comp package too because one of the other factors that we have as you'll see on there is like the insurance split so the portion that the town pays for the employees insurance because that that is that is a factor you know for some folks in um, seeking employment so that was one of the things that we wanted to do <clears throat> and when we went through the list, we looked at the, I don't know, we didn't come up with a specific weighting percentage in a way maybe, we, you know, it might be something good to do, but we looked at things like the population, the EQV per capita, their budget, and the road miles to an extent too. I mean, that, that factors in somewhat with the highway department, but we're a really small town, like physically one of the smallest in the state. So, we're, so we've got a smaller amount of road miles in that sense but so that's what we this is what we came up with for our new list of comp towns and, and proximity too i mean yeah and and we left there was one that we left on there um because it was it's sort of a physical outlier but we, we were talking about how it it's good to have maybe one out there that's maybe a little farther out um because you could look, there's a lot of towns like you know, I don't know how often we talk about how many towns on the Cape are very similar to us sure. in, in a whole lot of ways. So that's why we left Sheffield out there. Now we know they had a, a higher EQV, but really they're very similar in all the other aspects. And the EQV is mostly because of high second home property values from, you know, from folks out of state. So we wanted at least one town in there from another region that was very similar. And, and it's, we actually increased the number in here, too, of, of comp towns. So we um, so wanted to get that in there. So Dave, could I ask, do it, were there any towns dropped off, or were there just towns added? I think um, we, we dropped, dropped a couple off, didn't we? We yeah. dropped Granby. Yep. Granby, yep. Okay. This was large. Yep. Yes, yeah. And, because I know, and we also looked at, um, was it Waitley's um, uh, yes. comp review? Mm -hmm. and. Some of the other towns around, they also used like Greenfield, which we thought was not a yeah. fair, yeah, it just makes sense. the size, just because it's within a physical area. You know, it doesn't mean that we're in competition with them for employment or that we're a favorable comp for a lot, you know, for the obvious reasons. So, <clears throat> but I think if we, if we get agreement on this, then it'll allow us to go to the next step. And we're trying to make this as and there was a lot of discussion about how, you know how systematic you can make right. it we're trying to make it as systematic as we can so that it's not this painful process every time we have to go through it and you know it we're spending our energies on a set of variables that we all you know we all have the same understanding of what we're trying to do yeah because then in the end we're just arguing or discussing about you know how to actually do or what, what the amount should be, or things like that, rather than over the underlying fundamentals, you know? Sense. So, any other room? Um, just, just that the number, I mean, we, we look, we, we understood that maybe 15 towns is kind of on the upper end of what you usually have with the comp, mm -hmm. you know, for comparable, so that was factoring in. We tried to arrange, you know, we tried to, there's a number of different things you could plug in or out on the list, or we just tried to, you know, and we can answer questions about any particular one you like to see or are seeing that you are wondering about, but, you know, we were trying to kind of uh, consider all the variables and, uh, to, and come up with a manageable list. And, and, and also, too, I think that helped us, too, because then 
you know, you, you figure periodically you're going to want to reassess the list. So that kind of gives you an idea of what tools and methods you use to assess what you include on your list, which was good. So we've got 12 towns now, mm -hmm. aside from us, uh, to do comps against. And, you know, for obvious reasons, we try to pull ones within a, a reasonable geographic region, too, that we're close. Cause, <clears throat> you're going to have a certain amount of plus or minus for any given category. Just by region. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And and one of the things that, you know, was kind of interesting and difficult sometimes too is, is you say, all right, you know, our town has this particular position. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's very difficult to find an exact comp on that position right. because one town will tweak it a little bit this way or that. So it, it gets to be a little challenging in that respect. Does adding, if I could, Mr. Chair, does adding the number of towns here to... 12 total comp towns gives enough depth to at least begin that process? I think so, yeah. yeah it seemed to be. So we, we haven't received, we haven't got job descriptions for all these yeah. positions yeah. yet, but but just the knowledge base that we have about some of these different towns, I think yeah. we do. And, you know. And that, and that, that'll always be a challenge is getting the, <laughs> getting the getting job the job descriptions. descriptions. Right. That's why I, I was saying through this process, it would be so fantastic if there was like a centralized database that sure. everybody just put the stuff where we could get it. But such a thing doesn't exist yet. <laughs> can be cutting edge and start it. Uh, there's right. definitely a need for it out there, yeah. So, so. is this a require a vote <laughs> of the board to adopt these as comp towns? Well, I think it would be good just so that we're all in agreement on the list, I think, you know, and then it'll then because then we can put that behind us and then move on to the next step so we can try to get as systematic an approach as because it helps us when we have our um, when we have the automatic mm -hmm. system to come up for the uh, the colas and things like that. And this would be one more tool that will help us, I think, so moving along. If that's the case, if I could, Mr. Chair, if that's the case, can we put a timeline on that and then adopt this list for blank period of time to, I, to be yeah, reassessed think, in the future? I think that'd be a good idea, right? And then we have a periodic reassessment of the list. Because I think that's something we were talked about doing anyway, and then I think to sort of codify that would be good. Thank you. Um, yeah, and then I think we're gonna next we're gonna try to get our job descriptions and everything. And um, it was it was a good meeting too. We've got a, a, a Dick Lepak is on the board now. Mm -hmm. I think that was a fantastic addition. Yep. He's definitely very thoughtful. Yeah. yeah, and he's got a lot of good uh, input in that. So it's been great to have him on there. So up to a I think we're up to a full compliment now, right? I think, or are we short one? Or short one. One at large, yeah. right? Yeah. So if anybody would like to be on the personnel committee, let us know, you Wait. know, yeah. So. Well, we have five, but we're, that's including you, right? And I don't, I, I yeah, actually don't really know what the thought there was one at large, but. There's one at large. So. Well, if you're looking for a motion, if there's no other discussion, I'd make the motion to include these this list as presented for a maximum of three years before it's reviewed. That's a good second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Great. One less thing to argue about. For the <laughs> <laughs> well, it just helps us. Like then we then we've got a nice. So then we have yeah. you know a structure and. If we're all gone in three years, then you know somebody comes in and they know, okay, here's my list, here's how we got the list. Mm -hmm. Because that was one of the things, you're like, well, how did we come up with this list in the first place? Because it, it just sort of happens and you forget about it and it's not always... Well, the, the goal so, here would be to be able to mine as much quality information to make an informed presentation. Exactly. You may, you may find adding comp towns may take a couple of years to get decent information out of to actually see if it's truly comparable again but by having a list to start you know you gotta you gotta, gotta have it somewhere start, right? That's right. You, gotta you gotta start, start. start chipping away at the thing right. because it's yeah it's sort of flailing away at the thing and, and i think it, it'll the better we are with our record keeping in this process too i think the better it will be for us and <clears throat> other towns because i think you know other towns struggle with the same thing sure. so great well thank you thanks okay. thanks Thanks, Peter. Glad to be here. Thank you. I see we have a lot of minutes. That's yeah, I also, um, the 1023 minutes are in there for your review as well. Okay. 
I just finished them today. That's where they were. <laughs> <laughs> Got them. <laughs> it's been busy. Right. Uh, move the minutes of 925. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Move uh, October 10. And I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That was our special town meeting warrant article yeah. motion. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, that's right. Is there a vote there? Yeah. That was all ayes. Okay, yes. uh, move uh, October 23rd. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Zero on that one. Aye. And we have a final one, October 30th. That was for our special town meeting. There's yes. no actions taken. I'll move the uh, minutes of the 30th. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let me move on to our Board of Selectmen updates. Um, oh, uh, 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 just that um, uh, capital planning meeting tomorrow night to uh, do over the proposals for engineering study of the buildings. The important part of that, uh, if, if adopted and moved forward, is uh, twofold. One is uh, it helps execute some uh, uh, much needed work on engineering studies of the buildings and their assessments and some flexibility. It also establishes a baseline for uh, long-term uh, capital maintenance requests, mm -hmm. yeah. long-term capital maintenance needs. And the way the capital plan is currently structured, uh, those needs push out capital expenditures uh, and needs for as much as a 30-year window. So when all is said and done, we get through, hopefully this this year, we go through this part of the process, contract with an engineering firm, review their recommendations, plug them into the capital plan, which is to help develop through the work with the COG, and uh, have that for future reference. So because it's a 30 year horizon. That's 30 year that's horizon. Nice. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah. That, that kind of reminds me of one of the uh, the, the large joint school committee meeting where we we're discussing right. very similar things. Right. So that was a that was a good meeting. And then um, and we had our personnel committee meeting last week. So we're starting to chug along on that stuff. So that's a good thing to tackle. Wow. Uh, I would I'd like to uh, offer congratulations to the um, Frontier Western Mass Volleyball Champions. That's right. As I said, 13th year, 13th time. Yeah. Um, it's pretty amazing. It's a pretty amazing run. Also, um, the athletic teams at Frontier, the football um, was in the... Uh, Playoffs, so you get the uh, Western Mass Finals football and field hockey. The field hockey, yeah. which was runner up to uh, Greenfield uh, soccer. I mean, they all did an outstanding job. I like to uh, remind people if they ever have an opportunity to, it be a, it's an experience to go watch our young men and men and women out there participating. It's an amazing thing. Also, I'd like to uh, express the uh, to the church. They had a few weeks ago. They had a uh, a get together, <coughs> or they had a, a service and a uh, luncheon afterwards, celebrating their 300th year, 300 years of participation in the town. And I, I mean. It's it's hard to say today, but 300 years ago, the, the Congregational Church was an integral part of the community. Um, so I'd like to um, ex pass along congratulations to them for their 300 years of service to the community of Sunderland, because they, they have been working for 300 years to make Sunderland what we are today. So I'd like to thank them for everything. One of the things that let you get incorporated back then we needed it. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have a uh, senior center. Just to let people know, um, the senior center is going through a couple things right now. Um, Town of Deerfield is looking at uh, housing of the senior center in particular. They, 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 they may look 
look at the, uh, the Deerfield Congregational Church. Mm -hmm. um, nothing, nothing has progressed to date, to date, last I heard at least. Um, but we're look, you know, just so people understand, there is there is thoughts of doing something with our senior center, the location, um, and it may it may end up staying where it is. Uh, it's, so it's a kind of a nice conversation. If people want to get involved in that conversation, I would uh, encourage them to come to the this <coughs> Board of Oversights for the South County Senior Center. Uh, I think we probably should have some thanks and fair too about uh, for our Halloween with the um, the library. Their scavenger hunt the police. I hear that went uh, really well. Uh, sounded like it was a really good event too. So thanks yep. to them for doing that. Nice creative way to approach uh, Halloween, which was great. Sherry. Uh, just a couple of things. I have a recommendation for the window inserts through the Green Communities uh, project. And um, the award uh, recommendation is for ARC window. And the um, price is $25,637.24. And that amount is covered under the um, Green Communities Grant. So we, uh, with the board's approval, we'd like to get started and get those inserts in. They, they're ready to go in December. So, uh, And those are like interior window inserts? Right. If anybody's wondering about that, that should It'll be the first and second floor of this building, so it should help with the, the heat and uh, energy. Those are removable? Yes. Got it. Especially... Uh, sitting up here on those cold winter nights when the northwest wind is howling and you can actually hear it whistling through it. It's like something out of an old uh, horror movie or something on a gothic film. Yeah, so that'll be good. Do uh, you need a vote from us on Yeah, that? just a mo uh, motion to award to ARC. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 One step closer to more energy savings. That, that's, uh, that's less oil in the tank. That's right. That's right. And I saw it was uh, I see something about a fuel. Um, we've got a fuel thing for this year too now. Yeah, that's oil. all set too. Right. Yeah. All right. That's good. Um, and then the other thing I just uh, to make the board aware, I've reached out to Maya for a quote for health insurance. Um, we were informed earlier in the year that Hampshire Trust was looking at plan changes and there's going to be some premium increases as well. So I thought it would be a good idea to see um, what else is out there and, co and comparable in the market, and that would be Maya. And um, so they're putting together a price quote uh, for review for the financial management team to take a look at. Um, and good. Thank you, Sharon. Sure. Last thing we've got out here is from George, who about surplus equipment. He wants to take he wants to take a holder attachment valued at three thousand and the Ford Crown Victoria valued at a hundred dollars, designated a surface surplus, and then our bylaw our policy allows for trade in when making a purchase or trade. Is that what the goal here is? The second phase of this, right? Requesting the approval to trade if it's if it's valued or if it's declared surplus for an accessory on the right. holder. So taking taking some older equipment, older attachments, and putting them on for current equipment, uh, current attachments for essentially a trade. Yeah, is this one of the ones that broke last year? I think the plow. Is that what he's trying to replace? I wonder. I think so. Okay. Well, first things first, I authorize the um, declare surplus the 1985 holder attachments as well as 2003 Crown Victoria, neither of which uh, are greater than $5,000 in value. Actually, combined, they're not $5,000 in value. So we can declare that. That's my motion. Second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. It covers the first half. And I'm not entirely sure the, and I, I'm putting this in the form of a question, mm. if this is actionable by the actual board or if this is simply through the procurement process. Yeah. 
right? We've declared the piece surplus. In the case of George's request, the request of the superintendent is to take these assets declared surplus, valued at ish three thousand dollars, and use them as trade toward the purchase of other equipment. In our in our by in our policy, it says that we're allowed to do that as a mechanism once something is declared surplus. Treated part of the procurement. We, we don't make that determination. Yeah, I agree. Once it's done, it's procurement. It's, right. it's not us. So okay. we, we've been notified by the highway superintendent. That's the intent, and for that, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Good use of the surplus. Right, you can't argue with that. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Let's see, let's see I don't know, FCAT. You want to go another half hour, 45 minutes? <laughs> what do you feel? Uh, <laughs> not so much. I, I don't see anybody with public comment at the moment. So, I would suggest, Mr. Chair, that since we are not uh, going to be meeting before uh, Thanksgiving as a board, I wish everybody here as well as everyone watching um, a wonderful holiday with not only their family but memories of family members past as well thank you scott thanks i would agree with that i didn't realize i forgot that it's not that it's far away nice. it's, like, it's wow. next week it is yeah so happy thanksgiving to everybody i hope uh, everybody has a good holiday i don't eat too much jerky and, uh, no not this year motion uh second the motion to adjourn all those in favor for adjournment aye aye, aye. Three zero. Chair.